Good morning to you, my friends, wherever you may be in the world today. Those of you who are tuning in for the first time, greetings. My name is Alan Clements. Those of you who are back, thank you for tuning in. May I encourage you to be a force multiplier. Share these videos worldwide. Let's spread the love. Let's spread the revolution. Today is uh, the second talk in a series through April based upon my newly released book, Extinction X-Rated. It's an auto-fictional, um, somewhere between um, first-person narration and autobiography and novel. It's a dark satire, for those of you who aren't aware of satire or darkness. Uh, you may not laugh, but you will grin. It's uh, confrontational. It's fantastically interesting to me. It's written as a film, a combination between The Manchurian Candidate uh, a Clockwork Orange, uh, Pulp Fiction, and Blue Velvet. Um, it's about the overcoming of tyranny through radical creative art and film and music, very much like with the boys and girls and the men and women, the nuns and monks in Burma today, inseparable from the revolution of the heart, the struggle for freedom, the second great independence movement in Burma the civil disobedience movement, the civilian dialogue movement, the confrontation of good with evil. Okay, a lot to share today. May I encourage you to tune in, chill, share, and hang here April 1st, 2021 from Los Angeles, California, United States. Uh, for those of you who've been watching the horror and the ecstasy of courage and action in Burma, and of course in New York yesterday, with the emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council 15 member body uh, presided over by the president an ambassador from China, um, Zhang Jun, uh, who vetoed the <laughs> who vetoed the, the absolute reality of an impending bloodbath. It's already been a bloodbath, but an impending ocean of blood and tyranny and tears in Burma. He said, no, essentially no. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for the information, but let, let Burma bleed and don't do anything to our pipeline that goes from the Bay of Bengal to Nunan province. And of course, all the military trucks now that are on the station between Burma and China, don't pay any attention to those. But you know, hey, listen, it's an internal affair. If they need to kill themselves and commit genocide, fine, but just keep that oil going from the Bay of Bengal into China, okay? No problem. Uh, no, we cannot stop the genocide, the ethnic cleansing, the assassination, the torture, the rape of the people of Burma. It's just not what we do here at the United Nations. I mean, to talk, even to quote, even to satirize is a type of pathology. I apologize for that. But I will say it is utterly sick to watch the machinations of politicized evil the United Nations Security Council, just an absolutely dysfunctional, psychopathic Congress of idiots, not to implore and invoke the right to protect innocent people from genocide, ethnic cleansing, and criminal, criminal crimes against humanity, rape, burning, torture, assassination, terror, if this isn't a moment, what is required? So my heart is broken. It's bleeding with my own anger and outrage. But what was expected? Okay, point one. Totally think it's disgusting to see how the United Nations Security Council handled things yesterday. Da Aung San Suu Kyi has been paraded before the tribunal of MASAC, the Ming Online State Administration Council, terrorist organization in Burma. Um, yet again, with more charges that could result in longer and more sustained torturous prison terms for she and her president 
and the economic advisor from all Australia, Sean Turnell, and so many other people. And, you know, it's probably becoming aware for most of the people in the world that Dong San Suu Kyi is very likely unaware of what's going on in her own country. I mean, why would a terrorist organization who kidnapped, I mean, kidnapped, I mean, we tolerate kidnapping and torture, rape, and assassination. I mean, no, no wonder we turn to, to depression as a response to evil. It's a healthy response to the evil that we have to encounter by being born into these dysfunctional psychopathic institutions called governments in the United Nations. And of course, it comes right back to the existential issue, Alan, get over it. Consciousness, human consciousness, the genome that we're all born into in context. Everyone is born with the accumulations of kilesa, Buddhist theology, Buddhist Abhidhamma. I almost want to say blah, 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 greed, anger, and delusion. And there is no solution in politics, in form, in context. But you know, right here, this is where the essence of my new book comes in for me. It is expanding beyond the country, the cause, the religion, and the nation, and trying in my own humble way to include the whole, the context of existence as the whole, the multi-layered intrusions on our own decency and sanity right now. One of them, obviously, going on in Burma is dictatorship, tyranny, terrorism, and torture. That is going on, and it's been going on from time immemorial. Wars and genocides and rapes and brutality and injustices from time immemorial. 800 billion human beings have lived on this planet up until this very second. The oceans have been filled, as it's been said in so many religious texts, with the blood of persecution and beheading and rape. Haven't you seen this enough in the world, O oh nuns and monks, to turn away from all engagement in form and seek the highest salvation through mindful engagement of the phenomenology of consciousness and overcome your own greed, anger, and delusion and attain the radiance of the unconditioned Nibbana. That's the theology. But here we are embedded in a context. And I want to speak today about that context and what it means for me to be responsible with consciousness embodied in context with different degrees of complexity. Do Aung San Suu Kyi introduced me to the phrase, the courage to care. The courage to care for things larger than one's own self-interest. Okay, Mahasi Sero, my teacher and my preceptor in the country of Myanmar, also known as Burma, when I was a monk for a very brief period of time, just four rains retreats, just, just short of four years. And he introduced me, he said, U Agathara, which was my monk's name that he gave me. He said, there are two types of meditation fundamentally. One is consciousness on consciousness. Mindfulness of the phenomenology of one's own mind and body. Normally known as intensive Vipassana or Satipatthana meditation. Employing mindfulness and effort and concentration, determination to look at the phenomenology, appearing at the six sense doors and begin to see how one creates one's own so-called interior reality. Then we're born into a context, he said. The second form of meditation is contextual mindful engagement. Consciousness in context, all times, all states, all circumstances. We are not individual islands. We are in an interrelated ecosystem of shared being, to state the obvious, but so easily overlooked. And so herein lies how we take the meditation out of singularity, so to speak, and put it into the interrelatedness of other, self and other, self and sub-selves, self and city, self and society, self and politics, self and earth, self and environment, self in cosmos, self in the multidimensionality of, 
of, of, of a hyperdimensional universe. All these concentric dimensions of inner and outer being become the vocation, to state the obvious, of the Dhamma Savant, the individual who's deeply concerned with her or his own ability to create their own interior reality and with what Da Aung San Suu Kyi talks about, if you're following me, having the courage to care to overcome one's own personal self-interest and include in that self-interest the interest with other, the well-being of other, which is the absolute opposite, to state the obvious again, of tyranny and dictatorship and totalitarianism. So here we have what's known, I would say, as the epic or the archetypal so-called battle, the war in samsara, the, the, the symbolic term to talk about concentric dimensions of context, realities within the cosmos, within infinity, hell beings, human beings, animals, devas, angels, disembodied beings that live in these Brahma Lokas, according to Buddhist psychology or Abhidhamma, 31 dimensions of existence. Those of you who've experimented with the psychedelic metaphor have seen within one's own meditative mind the different dimensions of consciousness. Ah, if I identify with this, I live in that particular dimensionality. But if I am more mindful of that dimension and relax my conditioned hold or fear with it, I begin to co-accentuate and engage different dimensions of reality. Well, here we have the fixation in Burma, not just only in Burma, but in Russia and China. Many of us all around the world live at times with recognition of our own relationship to totalitarian psychologies. But when really fused with delusion and the vigor of greed, like a crack cocaine, a cognitive crack cocaine, one will go to the end of the earth to sustain the addiction, strangely, to violence and tyranny and drink wine at night and make love with your husband or your wife or with your God or with your Allah or with your insipid, empty soul, and you think you are doing the right thing. Welcome to consciousness, correct? the perversions of consciousness. It was Krishnamurti that said, it's no measure of success to be successful in a profoundly sick society. And sick could be unpacked. War is sick. Tyranny is sick. The word R-A-P-E almost is meaningless unless it is happening to a sacred woman or a man that you know so well that you identify with the kin, family, lover, wife, sister, brother, father. You cannot live and breathe without responding to that circumstance of rape to defend the person, the woman or the man being raped. And yet at the Union Security Council, the Chinese ambassador, no, 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 there's going to be an impending bloodbath. Hey, man, what can I say? The oil and gas and the money and the profit, far more important and better that we continue to export all the fentanyl in the world coming from the Chinese nuclear power genocidal Xi Jinping. You know, I'll pause right here, you know. I've tried my best in this book to find the humor, the dark, satirical, comedic, wicked humor. Is there humor in that monk in 1965 and 1966 that walked to that Saigon city street and just poured gasoline on his body and went Poosh! I mean, that is so magnificent, so terrifying, and yet, the normalization of genocide, the normalization of assassination, the normalization of rape, the normalization of theft, the, the perversity of profiting and privilege. These men in uniform in Nepido, the, the fetish, the addiction to the continuity of the drug of privilege and power 
and all these badges all over your chest to signify murder and rape and ethnic cleansing, yet you call it upholding justice and the rule of law. The perversity of these ridiculous charade, it's the most despicable burlesque show called Life on Earth, right? How can a human being maintain sanity in a context of psychopathology? No wonder boys and girls commit suicide in mass. And you throw in this weaponized pandemic, the talk now of vaccination passports, no schools, and yet the borders are wide open and bringing in crime and bringing in disease and bringing in guns and bringing in COVID. And yes, they've got horrible circumstances there, but my God, we live with pandemics, we live with viruses, and now we have what looks to be the Trojan horse of a global pandemic that originated right down in China in a designated bioweapons lab in Wuhan, funded by a consortium of internationals, spearheaded by the pundit in America, the all-pervasive psychopath, Dr. Anthony Fauci. And he is the one narrating how we should behave when he had so much money and interest in the gain of function research to increase the lethality of a particular virus that came from that particular lab in order to develop more effective vaccines. And now you must be vaccinated. You must have a fucking passport. And you probably won't be able to go to the damn bathroom without a passport. I mean, hello, no conspiracy needed here, but global, co global authoritarianism and global totalitarianism, I mean, hey, it's in our head. They want to inject it in our body. All of a sudden, Earth went from a relative hell world into a maniacal global totalitarian onslaught. And... <laughs> I want to spend the month of April and perhaps the rest of my life screaming out with my heart and creative soul. If you'll join me, share these videos, stay with me. I'm going to include Burma, but I'm going to expand it to the world. I'm going to lose all censorship, all holding back. What is the point now of playing it safe? Swipes, likes, viewers. <laughs> Come on, man, it is time to get so weird that we normalize weirdness to confront and juxtapose, right? The psychopathology of dictatorship and totalitarianism and tyranny. I want to become so at two with war and violence and genocide and rape and assassination and lies and propaganda. I want to feel it in my body as the fever of typhoid. I want to feel it like dengue. I want the people who are infected with the totalitarian virus to feel it like the fever of dengue. Now that's evolution. If we had a vaccine to inject into the mind of the dictator and those hench women and men that follow the rule of the hatchet and the gun, how cool would that be all of a sudden we're known on international TV, the meltdown of their mind and their health, like those videos that we saw that came out in the 50s where soldiers were given secretly doses of the lysergic acid molecule and all of a sudden they went from hunting each other to a complete melting down of the defenses of this inculcated conditioning where you lost your empathy white boy you lost your soul white boy you lost your hope white boy and all of a sudden you can't pull the trigger anymore because you lost your conditioning to kill in the name of your unrecognized stupidity. Isn't that the existential dilemma that we're in? 
How many spiritual books have been written? How many Dharma books have been written? How much religion? How much prayer? How much meditation? How much mindfulness? 50 years of this shit and the world has only gotten worse. And quite frankly, me too. This book, by the way, just an aside, if you've never been addicted, don't buy it. If you've never committed or thought about suicide, don't buy it. If you still think there's hope in politics, don't buy it. If you're not willing to use your voice and creatively stand up and be vilified and canceled, don't buy it. I expect to be hated. I expect to be vilified. To me, it's going to be a badge of honor to be crucified by the far left and by the idiots and the running dogs of the Communist Chinese Party of America. They want us to believe and to participate in socialism and communism and global totalitarianism. Screw you. I am not going to do it. I'm not going to do it lying down. And I'm going to encourage everyone to state the obvious anywhere close to me in my life as friends and family and digital activists and savants around the world. Right, convene, let's bond and let's fight the good fight while we have a chance to do it. Dong Sun Tzu Chi has been kidnapped. It's not enough for me to say shame on you, dictator. It's time to take the power away from them and bring it right back into embodied, mindfully, radically lies, courageous, intelligent power and mock and shame and sing and drop rad little videos and audios and music on Instagram and on parlor and on clubhouse and telegram and signal and yes mr zuckerberg on your fucking sorry ass thank you very much for allowing me to broadcast on youtube and facebook and i want to do a tv talk show coming up soon i want to talk to the people out there have dialogues and i want to really radically use satire and comedy and humor extinction x-rated on amazon worldwide as of this morning proud to say is my rad attempt at dropping a, a cinematic mind bomb like the monk who immolated himself and the nuns who immolate themselves in Tibet. I don't have the courage to burn my body, but I can burn my mind and I'm going to use my voice and I've used it in this book to basically set the torch of conscience so bright that it shines. Yes, I would much prefer that Joseph Biden and the vice president all do psychedelic assisted existential psychotherapy with me and a team of people. We don't need ayahuasca to purge our trauma. They need it. The United Nations Security Council needs a heroic dose 